Hello, Parasites and Paramours. My name's TV Sky, and um, we are continuing in our ongoing quest to talk about the older champions of League of Legends and sort of categorize and catalog where they were and just how substantially they have been neglected in their lore for a very long time. And as luck would have it, one of our targets, Vladimir, has recently received a massive new update to himself, Riot managing to beat me to the punch here and giving Vladimir a proper new place in the new lore of League of Legends before I could get around to talking about how shitty it is that they haven't given him a proper new place in the new lore already. <clears throat> that lore update has arrived in a few parts. First, he's received himself a complete new biography, which has been a substantial, massive overhaul uh, of a lot of, of what his character used to be about. And he's received a big new short story, not a color story, which are the short stories that usually accompany champions, but a short story, specifically a piece of lore content that's separate from just the bio and sort of the, the character description. It's called Art is Life, and we'll be tackling that one in a separate video. We might sum up some of the action that ha happens in it uh, for the purposes of this video, but mostly we'll just skim over it and dedicate an entire video just to kind of reading through that one and breaking it down and doing like a complete live commentary as I'm sometimes want to do. So for the purposes of this video, we'll be looking at his character design. Oh Lord, we will be looking at his character design, his new bio and his old bio and talk a little bit about who Vladimir used to be and who he has become now. And by the way, <clears throat> I'm gonna be clearing my throat all the way throughout this because for whatever reason, I don't know why, this is just my throat today. It's just, it's just full of slime all of a sudden for no good reason. It's probably a side effect left over from that extended trip into the sewers and Dark Souls or something like that. But that is a completely different video series, which doesn't really relate to this one. So let us start with where Vladimir came from. Back in 2010, when Vladimir was released, and stop me if you've heard this one before, he was released into the game. Then for about four years, absolutely nothing happened to his lore. Nobody wrote any new stories for him, anything like that. Then the lore retcon hit in 2014. He was hastily rewritten into something that could work without the League of Legends being a part of his character. And then another four years passed until 2018, when he has finally received himself a proper new bio. So far, it's pretty much the same story I've been telling over and over and over again with these old champions because that's very much the story of League of Legends lore as a whole. It's, it's, <clears throat> if you haven't cottoned on to it by now, Riot have kind of dropped the ball on their older lore, which is why I'm pleased that they're finally getting around to, you know, giving the whole universe a thorough reboot and recontextualization now. But it's also why I'm going to keep poking them about it, because if, when you have one of the biggest video games in the world, you have to accept the criticism. So anyway, <clears throat> Vladimir used to be a dude um, who murdered some people and then he found out that he really liked murdering people because he likes blood a lot. And so because he likes blood a lot and he likes murdering people, he's like, probably going to get in trouble with the law. So he moves away from the city state of Noxus and journeys around and finds a temple where there's a monk. And in that monk in the temple uh, really likes blood as well, turns out. So they like blood together a lot for a good long time until Vladimir learns all about liking blood the absolute most. And then uh, the monk is like, you should eat me. So Vladimir eats him by absorbing every drop of blood in the monk's body and they kind of fuse together. And then he goes off to the League of Legends to fight in the League of Legends because he really, really likes blood, y'all. He really likes killing people. He really likes blood. And Noxus is like, well, he's weird, but we can use him to kill people. So that's cool. That's essentially what his lore used to be. And I'm, I'm making a little bit of fun of it here because it really is just, there's a dude who really likes killing people and who's super into blood. And it turns out that's a kind of magic you can have. So now here's a magic blood man. It is a very simplistic lore. I've never been a big fan of his old lore state. Now, the one that happened after the 2014 lore retcon is essentially 100% the same. It just cuts out any mentions of the League of Legends itself. Vladimir, by the way, also has a League Judgment, which is one of those rarest pieces of lore that was a, it was a piece of lore that used to be released alongside champions when they got into the game. Um, describing a sort of ent entrance ritual to the League of Legends where you get to dive directly into their heads and sort of see their darkest fears or some some part of their darkest their darkest night of the soul laid bare. Vladimir, mostly it's about how he really, really likes blood and he likes killing. He was kind of a one-note character, essentially, is what I'm trying to get at. And the reason I bring up the relative simplicity of his old lore is because the new lore has, well... 
it has added, shall we say, a few layers to the layer cake of blood that is Vladimir. A fiend with a thirst for mortal blood, Vladimir has influenced the affairs of Noxus since the Empire's earliest days. In addition to unnaturally extending his life, his mastery of hemomancy allows him to control the minds and bodies of others as easily as his own. In the flamboyant salons of the Noxian aristocracy, this enabled him to build a fanatical cult of personality around himself, while in the lowest back alleys it allows him to bleed his enemies dry. <clears throat> so, Vladimir, in the old lore, essentially, he was just some dude who really likes blood, and then he gets blood powers, and then, hey, I'm a champion now. Very much a different beast in the new lore. Here, Vladimir is a person almost as old as LeBlanc herself, as in, insofar as the story tells it. He's someone who's been around almost since, uh, since pretty much since Noxus was still ruled by Mordekaiser, and, and who indeed might have been, played a part in overthrowing that dark sorcerer. And uh, he was a servant of the Darken. This is the first thing that, that the story does in order to, because Vladimir, again, in the old lore, outside of being a Noxian, had extremely, like, no connection whatsoever to the broader lore of League of Legends. Like I said, he literally was just a dude who was really liked blood and who turns out was good at blood magic. Here, there's an effort being made to tie Vladimir in on a much more fundamental level to the rest of the League of Legends universe. He becomes a servant of a Darkin, a Darkin who teaches him the secrets of blood magic. And by the way, blood magic is also what, um, at least it's, it's part of what Aatrox uses in order to build himself a body out of the people that he possesses. Blood magic and, and sort of uh, the, the craft of flesh is part of that. Vladimir learns this craft from the Darkin themselves. Eventually, his, ma his Darkin master is slain after many, many, many years. At that point, Vladimir has become an incredibly powerful blood mage. And <clears throat> um, he goes to what will eventually become Noxus. He goes to the Immortal Bastion, hangs out sort of in, in, in the general area. And a pale dark sorceress approaches him. when he, He's like essentially hanging out being like a god of some barbarian tribes because... He, really good at blood magic and it's hard to distinguish between a dude who can kill you by drawing all your blood out with a snap of your fingers and a god so he becomes a god of barbarians leblanc shows up and is like hey you know what we should do we should overthrow mordekaiser and build noxus and so they do and that is the beginnings of the black rose which is the secretive sort of order the sect the 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 secret society that controls a lot of the power at the heart of Noxus, which Swain is alternately sort of semi, kind of quasi-allied with when it suits him, and at other times is waging a war to try and exterminate their influence from Noxus itself. And Vladimir becomes um, an, an important hemomancer, an important blood mage in Noxus itself. He teaches the art of blood magic on to the Noxian military, among other things, and sort of makes that part of the culture um, of the city and he gets himself a cult of personality and he just essentially hangs out in the background for hundreds and hundreds of years alongside LeBlanc, steering the city, steering the political landscape and sort of going through many different iterations of himself. He keeps reinventing himself um, in, in different forms. And so with the rise of Swain, who is a little bit of a new thing in Noxus that, that's kind of messing with the order that him and, and LeBlanc had put in place. <clears throat> He's like, okay, it's probably time to be active again. So Vladimir has emerged out of hiding, rebranding himself as a young socialite in Noxus and restarting his cult of personality and um, possibly he's intending to betray LeBlanc and the Black Rose in order to invent some kind of new fate or identity for himself. This is something that comes across in the Art of Is Life short story, which again, we're not going to dive into very deeply here, but essentially what we are told in the Art of Life short story, which as you can see, is not very short at all, is that Vladimir has had essentially many lives. He has, he has, he has been many people over the course of the centuries. He has, has had many looks to himself because again, blood magic, he can reshape his body as he pleases. He's had many different roles. He's been all kinds of different people. And every time he reinvents himself, Almost kind of like the Doctor in Doctor Who, he sort of becomes a new person. And um, the thing is, Vladimir, despite being essentially immortal because of his blood magic, 
doesn't have an immortal mind. His mind is mortal, and so most of his unnaturally extended life endures not in his memory, but in his chronicles. So he has a bit of a, a case of uncertain identity where his past lives are not... He can't really remember a lot of it. He, he keeps it in his chronicles, he keeps it in books, he keeps memories of it in other things than his mind. And so there's an interesting thing going on here, especially in the art of his life story, where we have this question of exactly what is his identity? Like, what has immortality really done to his mind and his soul and that's again something we'll get into later but point being there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here first of all the fact that he is so very very old but he doesn't have an ancient mind like he doesn't have a mind that can recall things that happened 500 years ago with perfect clarity means that he there's a lot of of potential for exploring the many different lives of vladimir are like ripe for exploration in all kinds of different ways you could do comics about young vladimir you know serving under the uh, under the dark and you could do comics about him in one of his later lives serving as a blood god of some barbarian tribe there's all kinds of stuff there to explore but it also means there's a rich tapestry of emotion to draw from like what how many different kinds of people has he been in his life what has those experiences what have those experiences done to him and i think it's a much more interesting conception than hey i like blood and i do blood things with blood because blood blood which again i'm making fun but old vladimir really wasn't a very interesting character so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here he has connections to the darken specifically he would have some kind of connection to aatrox i imagine at least having heard of him if nothing else he has connections to leblanc and swain and mordekaiser of all people as well as probably the other members of the black rose like for instance as we can see here down at the bottom of the page elise who also haunts noxus and who has kind of a similar character concept like elise is also one of those ancient immortal things that consume other people to renew themselves and who hangs out in Noxus. And I'm interested to see how they handle the tension between those two, like, because they have relatively similar concepts, and it seems to me that Elise is someone who's obsessed with remaining unchanged and preserving herself exactly as she is, whereas Vladimir is someone who's obsessed with reinventing himself, with becoming a new person over and over again, with living many lives and not just living one life for a really, really long time. Whether any of that is going to be explored in future lore updates is, of course, up in the air. Riot have been very clear that they're promising that they're definitely for sure this time after you know, almost almost 10 years, they're finally, they're ready to really definitely dive into the lore and explore it and, and expand the IP and stuff like that. I hope that's true, because there's a lot of interesting stuff to dive into with Vladimir specifically. I really do want to praise this lore update because I took a character who had no depth. <laughs> he really had, he was completely one note and turned him into something that is complex that has a lot of gray areas to him that has a lot of, of of like you can talk a lot of interesting stuff about psychology and about the effects of a long life on a mind that's not really meant to it the effects of living your life by taking other people's lives like there's there's stuff to do there because unlike nocturne who we talked about last time who is an unchanging demon he only wants one thing and he he's going to want the same thing forever because he's a demon he's unchanging he's he represents an aspect of reality specifically terror and fear and nightmares Vladimir is someone who can change, and when a character can change, they can be interesting, at least in my opinion. So, good lore update, uh, all, all is well on that front, I think. So let's talk about <laughs> his character design. Let's talk about his character design. So, Vladimir's character design is not great. It's not terrible anymore. It used to be, though. Like, I, like I've harped on many times already, Vladimir literally used to be just some guy. Like, he literally used to be just some guy who got really into blood and blood magic and stuff and became a really good blood mage. And so the whole aristocratic vampire look thing going on with him there, this, this whole, like, why does he have knives for fingers? Why does he have knives on his coat? Like, who would, why, what's the point of, you can't even cut someone. It was, it was already kind of a silly character design, and then it made no sense with the character because the character himself, all he has ever expressed is a desire to kill. I mean, he was, a, I believe, a nobleman in Noxus back in the day, in, back, in the, back in the old lore as well. But all the character has ever expressed as a point of characterization is he loves murdering people and he likes blood. And that's like, but that's not what you're communicating with this character design. What you're communicating with this character design is, oh, he's a vampire. 
And that, by the way, is one of the thematics of, of Vladimir. He's a vampire. He, he is, in very literal terms, a vampire, just with the slight little twist that he doesn't drink people's blood through, you know, big sharp teeth or anything. He just slices them open and pulls it out of them um, in a much more literal way. You can t tell me that he's a blood mage all you want, but the archetype, like the whole idea of this ageless immortal being that has existed for ages and ages and has been at the center of power politics in this ancient city-state for ages and ages and who has this ancient name and this cult of personality and who seems to be sort of effortlessly charming and he can control people's minds and bodies with his magic and stuff like that. Yeah, he's a vampire. Uh, let's just be clear about that. Vladimir is in all of the ways that matter except for the long teeth and turning into a bat. He is a vampire and he's an interesting way to put a vampire into the game without having to actually invent vampires as a species. I quite like that. And I think it's also an inspired idea to say that, oh, the blood magic came from the Darken, because the Darken have already been established as being pretty much the best at that kind of magic. And so it makes sense that if there is someone else in the world who's super good at that kind of magic, that it will be connected somehow to the lore of the Darken or indeed to the history of the Darken. Like, Again, before, there were no other blood mages in League of Legends. There was nobody else who used blood magic or who referred to blood magic or who had, like, blood magic anywhere in the lore of their story. So here, unifying those two, like, uh, Vladimir with the Darken, who have been established as blood ma magic wielders, <clears throat> is a good choice. His character design is better because of the new lore. In the new lore, he is this you know, Noxian power broker socialite who has been alive for hundreds of years, who's weird and eccentric, he has a cult of personality, he's got, like, flamboyant style, and he's uh, all that stuff. That makes a lot more sense with the ridiculous, ridiculous character design that the character has. However, why does he have knives on his fingers? Like, why? And I'm asking that as a very serious question. Why does he have knives on his fingers and on the side of his coat and indeed on like the back of his cape? I think there's even knives hanging off of that one. And I understand the point from like a design perspective in the sense that, oh, he slices people open in order to get to the blood. That's the thing that it's supposed to communicate. But if the whole thing is that this guy is so incredibly good at blood magic and just like the best at blood magic just absolutely the best human who has ever done blood magic in the world ever and who's lived for hundreds of years because he's the best at blood magic why does he need knives to get to the blood that's a weird thing and also just the knives on the on the on like the coat sleeves are just dumb like they're just dumb they're just there because and it makes no sense and it's stupid and I, I, I really genuinely don't like it it's really bad but the part of Vladimir's character design that's the worst. Why why is his head an onion? Why is why why does his head look like wh why does his head look like that? Why did why why that hair though? Why that hair? That's just I get I, I get it from a conceptual idea that it's supposed to make him look kind of weird and off-putting and strange and a little bit alien stuff like that, but like it's it's such a manicured specific look and even with the new identity as being this sort of avant-garde kind of playboyish high socialite noxian dandy character that he's trying to play it just it looks so dumb it just it just looks dumb i'm sorry i can't give you a more substantial reason for why i hate it it just looks so incredibly dumb <laughs> His character design in general is supposed to also call back to vampires, by the way. The whole thing about being dressed in sort of this regal nobility wear and with the long pantaloons and the boots and the long coat and stuff like that, all of that calls back to stereotypes that we have um, about nobility and vampires in our fiction. And that's kind of a little bit disappointing. Like, I get that that's a simple shorthand to use in order to say, okay, this guy is about blood stuff. And he's like an ancient noble person in Noxus that it makes sense. But what I would like to see is much more an expression of Noxus on the character. And Noxus in recent times, if you, if you remember characters like Swain, has been defined much more by a kind of drab, sort of dark military style to it. And very much an emphasis on being a martial society. And I would like to see Vladimir incorporate that a little bit more into his iconography. Like to have something that looks a little bit more appropriate to the kind of stark darkness that... Um, that defines Noxus. Not in the sense that he has to not be a dandy. I think having him be sort of a foppish, dandy-looking, kind of 
pretty boy, essentially, is a good idea. And by the way, make him look... Just get rid of the hair. He can't be a pretty boy with that hair. He can't be a pretty boy with that hair. It looks so incredibly dumb. <laughs> he can't be a pretty boy with that hair. I get that on a conceptual level, but the clothes that he's wearing don't look like he's a representative of Noxus, which he is now. Like it, much like much like Swain is a representative of of Noxus, and Darius is a representative of Noxus, and LeBlanc is a representative of Noxus power structures. Like that's really what they represent, and so does Vladimir. He represents a pillar of the power structure of Noxus that has been around since the Empire's inception, essentially. That should be reflected more in the kind of character design that he has. Like, he really should look more like he comes specifically from that aesthetic, from that city, that he dresses himself to connect with the values at the heart of that society. And mostly I would just kind of tone him down a little bit. Like, I would, I would, in terms of, of his presentation visually, I would tone down the outfit. And I would emphasize the blood magic. I would emphasize the magic effects. Like, I would have pools of blood just kind of... Like, if he had, like, a long coat on, I would have blood just kind of continuously dripping out from under that coat and trailing him wherever he goes. I would do stuff with, like, um, like his idle animations and just... Maybe he permanently has a, an orb of blood just kind of hovering around him, swirling around him, doing blood-like motions, like, dripping and, and flowing blood. Really emphasize that and then use that to contrast the sort of darker, sl slightly more stark, slightly less flamboyant kind of outfit that is more appropriate to a Noxian character. And by the way, if anyone wants to bring up that LeBlanc also looks like a completely outrageous, rid ridiculous character, and she's supposed to be from Noxus, we will get to LeBlanc. Oh, believe you me, we will get to her because I have some criticisms there as well. I would emphasize the blood a lot more. That's very much the thing that he's about now. Like again, he used to be a serial killer before, and in that respect, I sort of suppose the knives on the fingers make sense because it's a ridiculous weapon that would never ever work unless you were a crazy serial killer. But now he's not that anymore. He's a blood mage beyond all else, and I would emphasize the magic of that. I would emphasize the spectacle that he can conjure by using blood in all kinds of different ways. I would, I would really go with that and tone down the rest. <sighs> anyway... Uh, so, last little uh, notification, just today we learned that there's gonna be a uh, Smash Bros. Direct in two days. I'm gonna be streaming live reactions to that. Uh, there's gonna be a link to this page down in the description so you can bookmark that and, and, and be ready for it if you're interested in watching along with me and hearing me get excited like a fanboy over Nintendo's stuff. It's generally a good time. I don't usually announce stuff like that in videos like these, but I figure it's probably a good idea to do more promotional work around the stuff I do. Because... YouTube is getting worse and worse at letting people know when I make stuff. Um, the last Dark Souls video, for instance, I've heard from a lot of people that they just didn't get to see it because it didn't show up in their subscription box or in their notifications. And I, uh, So I'm sorry, but we're going to have to do more of these little announcements and, and cross-promotion stuff um, from now on. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the like button down below. I don't know if it does anything anymore. I mean, I hope it does. It probably does. It can't hurt. If, if you want to help me out, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and so on and so forth. And maybe the gods of YouTube will see fit to allow you to watch my content. If you have all been good little boys and girls and worshipped at the altar of Google, maybe, I don't know. Hell if I know anymore. If you want to support me directly, which is uh, the best kind of support that, that you can give, well, there's a Patreon where if you have a dollar that you don't need, that, that you don't mind me having instead, then even a dollar actually genuinely helps me out quite a lot. If not, of course, that's completely okay. I'm just happy that you have watched the video so far. If you didn't enjoy this video, well, I suppose that is completely fair. Uh, there's a dislike button down below that you can hit. Although, I would warn you that uh, if you want to get to the dislike button, the one we've got here is essentially just a signpost. It points you in the right direction. You will have to follow the road out of town um, on a dark, moonless night. If, if there's a moon out there, you just don't even bother going. But you're going to have to bring a torch. Um, do not bring any crosses or wooden stakes or anything. You won't need those. Like, you might think that you need them because it's like a dark night. No, no, don't worry about it. Just go out of town on a moonless night following uh, the signs of the dislike button until you come to a fork in the road. And at that fork in the road, you must wait for a crow to fly overhead three times and cawing. And whichever direction it takes off in, you must follow it. Follow the road until you get to the cliff sites, whereupon you will see 
the castle of the dislike button lurking in the distance. And here you must steal yourselves for a long climb. Your horses will be tired, but when you get there, the dislike button will greet you in the doorway and it will invite you in for a pleasant evening's rest. Come in and be safe, for there is no fear in the castle of the dislike button. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>